Come out with us and play Love Your London Have a banana And so, our epic adventure in the wonderful part of London that is Acton comes to its conclusion with this, the eighth instalment, and it's going to be an epic one. It's been a long journey. So far, we've had run-ins with the police, we've fallen off our bikes, we've met some interesting people, visited a few bars, and even done some sport. If you're new to us, there is a link to watch a playlist of all these episodes in order at the end of this video. Alternatively, see the description below. In today's instalment of Love Your London, we are visiting East and South Acton, including a couple of interesting businesses. But please stay to the end, as we will also be explaining how you can bid for Sharon's exclusive sketch of the temple in Gunnersby Park, which she made in episode 2. But first, we still have some more of North Acton to check out. Okay, so we're almost finishing the Actons now. This is North Acton, North Acton Station. As you can see, it's a very sort of like up and coming area. Well, there's actually been a station here in North Acton since 1904. Actually, in zones two and three. If you work in the centre of town, it would actually be a lot cheaper to get a season ticket. You can just get a zones one and two. It's 24 hours on Friday nights and Saturday nights. And unfortunately, there's no toilets for anyone, abled or disabled. There's no step-free access. Well, there is down to the station. Although there's a, this beautiful ramp coming from street level for wheelchair users, once they get here, it's all steps. Um, now obviously it's a very old station as I said, but it's still quite annoying because you've got all these lovely ramps for wheelchairs, but where to? Let's have to go back up again. Please sort it out, London Transport. Get more disabled access. Really, really important in this day and age. Well, it always was important to be honest, but there's just no excuse anymore. Do remember to hit the subscribe button, by the way, and also like our channel. It's really important. Over there, there is going to be the new Old Oak Common Railway Station, which is going to supposedly open in 2026. And it's going to be part of that controversial HS2 line that everyone was talking about not that long ago. Now, right now, it's a huge depot. It is being demolished. It's a huge loss to this area. Now, that depot is named after the Old Oak Wells, uh, which are first mentioned in 1612. Again, very sweet water with a bitter aftertaste, and it became all the rage. By the end of the 1600s, everyone wanted to drink Acton water. It was one of the strongest purgatives um, around London, to be honest. Anyway, there's no more well, there's no more common, and there's not, no more train depot, because it's all going. It's such a sad thing, just HS2. But funny, HS2 does sound a little bit like H2O, so there you go. There is a sort of a slim, not really, is there? HS2, H2O. Anyway, so HS2 over there. Reach out and touch faith, your own personal Jesus. I can't know the rest of the lyrics, but well, I do know the rest of the lyrics, but I'm not going to do it here because they might demonetize me if I uh, if I um, start, um, you know, uh, quoting too many lyrics from the fantastic Depeche Mode. Now, Alan Wilder went to school here. The Alan Wilder. Now, he was the synth player for Depeche Mode between 1982 and 1995, i.e. the really good years. Uh, um, and this is where he was a, he was a really really gifted musician his mum brought him here uh, at the age of five I think um, and at the age of eight he learned how to play piano now I wanted to come in here um, and see the room where Alan Wilder first learned how to play piano but unfortunately um, it's school's out school's out for the summer even though it's been out for ages um, so they won't let us in oh, I really wanted to maybe go in there and see the piano maybe speak to some of the pupils but it can't happen um, yeah so basically he was here and then eventually he went and formed Cloaca with his uh, with his schoolmate um, and then Depeche Mode the rest is history <laughs> Okay, so here we are, we're outside East Acton Station. Not really an awful lot we can say about this one. It was built in 1920. Uh, it's on the central line, which means that it is open um, on Friday nights and Saturday nights, 24 hours. Unfortunately, there's no toilet here at all. 
Um, but uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's move on to the next one. Uh, one thing I, I must add, this actually now is firmly in zone two. It's not zone two and three like the previous one. This is a zone two only station. Okay, so we've just come up the hill from um, East Acton Station up Erkenweld Road. Um, and this here is the beginning of the 200 acre um, area known as Wormwood Scrubs. Now, Wormwood Scrubs is obviously synonymous with uh, quite a large, more gruesome building over there. But I first of all wanted to show you this police memorial. Now here fell David Wombell, uh, Geoffrey Fox and Christopher Head. Now what happened uh, in on the 12th of August 1966 there were these three police officers um, and uh, they stopped a car which they thought looked a bit suspicious because they thought that they were going to possibly be planning a prison break. Unfortunately uh, these three police officers were shot um, and it was known as a massacre of Baybrook Street which is what this street here is, 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 is called. Uh, so Womble and Head were shot by the 30-year-old um, Harry Roberts. I think uh, Harry Roberts went in hiding in Epping Forest, but it was, he was in court. It was not until 2014 that he was released at the age of 78. So he, he in fact became one of the longest serving um, prisoners in the UK. Um, uh, he, he served 48 years, which is a very long time for the UK. Uh, he'll now be about 83 and he's laying low in East London, apparently. Um, anyway, so Wormwood Scrubs, um, as I said, huge scrubland, open public space. It contains an athletic stadium named after Linford Christie. And the, the Nature Reserve has an amazing population of bats, lizards, 100 species of birds and 20 species of butterfly. Um, anyway, let's, um, let's have a look down there and see what we can find. Uh, this is the Old Oak um, Primary School and just over here we have the Old Oak Community and Children's Centre which is a short start uh, children's centre um, and it's right on the edge of Wormwood Scrubs Common. What a lovely place but what an aspirational view unfortunately that horrible wall over there that's the back wall of the ground where the Prisoners, the lifers, all the people in Wormwood Scrubs work out, try and work out how on earth they're going to get out of there. So that is the view, that is the aspirational view, unfortunately, that the people, I mean, it has a, I'm sure these scores are absolutely fantastic, but it is a shame that that is their view whenever they're playing. Anyway, we are going to have a look at the front of Wormwood Scrubs in a second, but there is one more thing I want to show you over there first. We're just down the road from, from Wormwood Scrubs, and we're at number 84 Wolfstan Street. Now, this is the birthplace in, uh, on the 5th of October 1949 of biographer and novelist Sir Peter Ackroyd. Uh, not a knight, is he? <sighs> he should be. I don't know, actually. I'll check it later. If, if he isn't a knight, Queenie sorted out. I really think she, she he really just does deserve to be a, a knight because the amount of amazing books he's written. Uh, he's written London, the biography. He's written Thames, Sacred River. And most recently he wrote um, Queer City, Gay London from Romans to the Present Day. Really important in the LGBT community, of course. And he lived right here with his granny. He never knew his father, I don't think. Uh, and he lived here until he was 19. And now, um, I assume you really love London because you're watching Love Your London, in which case I know that you will love London, the biography, the book. Um, as I said, now this, this street here is called Wolfson Street. Uh, Wolfson comes from Anglo-Saxon, meaning Wolf Stone. Um, and in the 10th and 11th century, there were quite a few bishops with that name, including one Bishop of London who died in 1023. So I would have thought that that is probably named after him. Okay, so we are outside the front of Wormwood Scrubs. Has a capacity of uh, 1,279 prisoners, known as the Scrubs for short. Opened in 1875 and home to some right hard bastards. Um, now you can make out those oval, pla oval plaster reliefs on the, on the left and on, on the top of on either side of the doors over there. If you can, uh, if you can uh, get closer to have a look at that. Um, now the, guy, the person on the left is Elizabeth Fry. And the one on the right is John Howard, and they're both famous prison reformers. Now, unfortunately, this prison has been failing inspections for years now. There's a huge rat and cockroach infest infestation. Uh, some prisoners are reportedly locked in their cells for some 23 hours a day. And on average, according to a BBC report, there are some between 40 and 50 um, skirmishes and violent incidents a month, including the odd murder. 
Right now, I've got a little funny personal story to tell you about this. Uh, my grandfather, Klaus Newberg, he was one of those uh, good Samar Samaritan people who are always on the f end of the phone to people who are feeling suicidal, etc. He, I think it was one of his first few days as a Samaritan years and years ago, um, he uh, went into Wormwood Scrubs uh, to speak to some lifers because there, was, um, there had been a, a huge spate in suicides. Um, and when he, when he finished um, his, his helping and advising, whatever you want to call it, Samaritan, um, he, um, he pressed the wrong button to get out. So he set off all the alarms and all mayhem broke loose. All these metal shuts started coming down and all the sirens started going off. Uh, yeah, so basically that was, uh, he was eventually rescued, of course, uh, but it did take him a while and he was quite worried and panicky, but there we go. There's my little story. I've got lots of little stories about Acton. Fantastic. Uh, we have Queen Charlotte's and Chelsea Hospital just over there um, and behind it we have um, Hammersmith Hospital. Now yonder lies neither Chelsea nor Hammersmith uh, which is really odd because I mean we're still sort of in Acton. Um, Shepherd's Bush is, is in that direction so uh, actually no towards Shepherd's Bush is, is, is over there. Ladbroke Grove is probably right over there. That's the, it's absolutely no idea uh, why it's called Chelsea Hospital, why it's called Hammersmith Hospital. It is not in Chelsea, it is not in Hammersmith. The funny thing is, in Hammersmith, you've got Charing Cross Hospital. So, I mean, sort out the nomenclature people. I mean, I know the NHS is wonderful, and this is obviously predates the NHS, but why all these weird names? It's just confusing people. I wonder who the hell went out in those vans. And yes, back by popular demand, it's another bit of sped up cycle footage as we leave Wormwood Scrubs and make our way to South Acton Station, which is 2.6 miles away. Sharon's wearing the harness. So this is Duquesne Road. We take a left down Hillary Road. And now we head westbound up the West Way, or the A40 as many of you know it. Oh, you've overtaken me. Yep, you were too slow. But you won't know where to turn off. Stop, 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 stop. Ah, you should have stopped. Where is he? Come on. Told you. Right, let's get to this place. Are you sure you want to go in front? Fine. Right, so this is Perrin Road. As in John Perrin's school where we were earlier? Was he a local benefactor or something? He used to own loads of land around here, but to be fair, he didn't actually donate the land to Acton. He donated it to the Worshipful Company of Goldsmiths in 1657. And it was the Goldsmiths who donated the land in the early 19th century and kept his name. So he didn't actually give anything directly to Acton? Au contraire, he left £10 in his will to the poor of East Acton. Oh look, stop! David Lloyd, remember in episode 5 when I said we'd really like a free invitation to snazzy David Lloyd Acton Park one day to review? Have they said yes? Not yet, no, but I'm going to give them another plug here, just in case. Oh, and it is relevant because the park house which David Lloyd took over used to be John Perrin's house back in the 1600s. Right, so it's through Acton Park again? Not again. Ah, but this time we're crossing it in the other direction. Down Mansell Road. Across Southfield's playing fields. Westbound on Southfield Road. Onto Fletcher Road. Through the gates and down Kingswood Terrace. And we've arrived. Okay, we're at South Acton. That was a very long journey through fields of flying ants. We're at the Kingswood Terrace end of South Acton. Um, now, South Acton um, is in Zone 3. 
It's the very last of the action stations that we're going to uh, visiting. Uh, it's on the overground, it's not a 24 hour station. Uh, it opened in 1880 and in fact until 1959 the district line also came here. Uh, now this is also on that possible overground extension between Hounslow and Neesden that is being proposed. At the time of filming it is, I repeat, still a proposal not being confirmed. Now it's very important if you are a wheelchair user that you get off, you're dropped off at the right end. As I said this is a Kingswood Terrace end which is perfect if you're going westbound. But if you're going eastbound it's a 1.3 kilometre um, journey at street level because the steps there, the steps there, you have to go all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, 1.3 kilometres to get on Palmerston Road, which is on the other side of the track. Oh, by the way, there's no toilet. There used to be, between 1932 to 1959, uh, there was a little train called the South Acton Shuttle, and it used to leave this station, South Acton, and go up to uh, the centre uh, of Acton, the one sort of stop in the big loop. Um, and famously, the driver used to say that he'd put the kettle on, um, uh, and be able to bring the milk into town and then by the time he came back his tea would be brewed. Uh, it was also a passenger train as well but it's all another one of those little things that used to be in Acton and has now disappeared. There we go that's uh, all I have to say about South Acton. Now around this corner we have somewhere where you can make a bit of a noise. We have to our right bell percussion and to our left, Bell West Studios. Uh, we're at the moment at Bell Percussion, um, and this is uh, this is this is a, been here about 150 years. Is that right? It's a family business. Uh, no, it's not 150. 30 years. 30 years. It's been here 30 That's, years. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's um, it started as a, a bunch of percussionists uh, from various different orchestras and bands and things. They just pulled their gear together. So when they weren't using it themselves, they essentially were hiring it out kind of thing. Eventually acquired some buildings which set up re uh, orchestral rehearsal spaces. Other companies that were in London, they would go under and we yeah. would snatch all their gear up. And yeah, here we are today with a warehouse full of toys. It is fantastic. Um, isn't it? So you've you know, got these are vibraphones, is that right? Yeah, so these are mallets for vibraphone, xylophone, vibraphone. timpani, glockenspiel, and things like that. We've got a lot of high end stuff where it's things that people are going to constantly keep buying as opposed to things like buying a drum kit once kind of thing. Things like that we'll order in if someone has something specific in mind, but it's not something that we have a relationship with people. Um, but we have got quite a decent relationship with Roland and electric kits. Yeah. Being London, no one can actually have a proper kit in their house because it's way too loud because we all yes. live on top of each other. So that's the get around with that. And then, yeah. I see, so you've got some LP bongos and batter drums and yes. congas and everything. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love them. Um, and uh, are, are there any sort of famous clients that you're allowed to div divulge and say that you that come here? Uh, yeah, uh, McFly. Okay. McFly, we've got uh, Little Sims, who's, uh, who's an up and coming rap hip hop artist. It's not my sort of thing, so no. I don't know how to define it. Uh, Gorillas, Leo Sayer. Oh, right, uh, of course, Leo Sayer, he, his ex wife used to live on Churchfield Road. Oh, right, there um, you go, we, see. We were speaking about him earlier. Um, yeah, and then we cater to a lot of orchestras as well. That's great, did anyone to Depeche Mode at all? No? I don't believe so, no. no. Oh, no uh, one, well, Alan Wilder from Depeche Mode went to school just around the corner from it. So oh, right, I see. I was just wondering. Okay, before Depeche Mode, he was in Cloaca with the drummer Ben Ives, I think his name is, um, who went to John Perrin's school. So we've been doing a little musical history of the area. So that's oh, right. cool. This is one of our colleagues now, actually. You can go and have a look at him. Soundproof for us.
Okay, so we're outside Chiswick Auctions now. Uh, we're almost at the end of our journey um, because that there is Bolo Lane. So we're, we're getting so close now to doing a full circle. Okay, so um, we're outside uh, Chiswick Auctions um, and uh, we've been doing this um, journey all around all around Dexon and uh, this is one of the very last stops we've been here for three days um, oh, very so good. fantastic we've just had an auction on um, Islamic and Indian art and then next week we've got six auctions including interiors homes and antiques watches modern British art books and manuscripts um, autographs and memorabilia um, so yeah we have 20 different departments right okay and um, about a hundred auctions a year and are they mainly online these days or do they're yeah. all yeah all they're all online right. but um, what that means is um, there's still somebody at the rostrum with a gavel yeah. uh, for every auction yeah. uh, so they're live streamed so you can watch anywhere in the world but we are also allowing people to attend auctions as well okay my great my great great uncle i think he had a he had a a Fudge Fetchum, Fudge and Watch. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether to get it mended because it's. You should it. bring it in and our watches specialist will have a look at it. Okay. Because right. he's also, um, he will take the watch apart and he will give you very good advice about whether it's worth repairing it yep. in order to put it into an auction. We have, um, depending on the value of watches, we sell watches every month okay. in our interiors, homes, and antiques auction, and then specialist watches like Patek Philippe's for example sure. go into our specialist sale yep. which is about three or four times a year okay so you should come in and see Thomas Asnar okay so here these are the highlights of our um, interiors homes and antiques sale which is next week and that auction has a little bit of everything as you can see furniture sculpture modern design uh, uh, ceramics, glass, bronzes, clocks, paintings, the whole lot in that sale. So some of that is here, but the main bit is next door, which I'll show you. Oh, I love these chairs. Yes, fantastic. That's one of the highlights. Oh my gosh. And then on the wall here, you see the highlights of our uh, modern British art, post-war and modern British art sale, which is also next year, uh, next week. We've just got the highlights here yeah. and down on this wall as well. Lovely. But this is the, this is the grandest room. Oh, wow. <gasps> so in here, Ooh. this is all um, interiors, homes and antiques. There's over 500 lots. And as, as I say, the sale is every month. Wow. And um, in, as, as you can see, it includes a little bit of everything. This here is 19th century. Um, looks Pretty. a bit like a guillotine, yes, but it's, but it's, um, it's, an, e it's an easel. It's an easel. <laughs> yeah. I think the estimate is four to six hundred pounds on, on that. Wow. But there's a little bit for everybody yeah. because estimates start sort of 80 to 100 pounds all the way up to uh, the low thousands. Sure. You've got modern art and you know contemporary, yeah. older 19th century oils. Oh, I love that Biombo thing, the, um, the, the, changing, the changing screen over there. Yeah, it's Viet, um, Viennese. Vietnamese. Yeah, Vietnamese, yes. yeah. Fantastic. So this, I mean, this sale is fantastic for anybody do wanting just to change their home, to do up their home, yeah. you just, just acquire one piece, start a collection. Yeah, it's a really, really good sale. Lovely. Great. I won't bother you any any, any, any longer. Oh, we've got so many things here. <laughs> You'll have to come and, back. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you what, Sharon's, Sharon's the art. She, she's got a, an MA in art. Um, oh, really? So she, she's the one who really should have come in here. <laughs> Sharon, put your mask on, just have a head and look through the door. You don't have to, don't have to, I'm, I'll stay out here. Wow, it's all very exciting. <laughs> and action. Okay, well, we are here. We have been here running, doing this now for three whole days in action. We were all actoned out. Fantastic place, I'm sure you can see. We're on Bolo Lane, which is actually where we started. Um, and this is Bolo, the Bolo House. How appropriate. 
Um, obviously we started off our journey next to another place called the Bolo House which was where the mess room for the Piccadilly line workers are on the same street up there that's loads and loads of episodes ago um, we're back here at the other place called the Bolo House um, today is Friday the 24th of July um, and um, we've been here for three days um, so we're not going to go any further this way because there lies Chiswick Chiswick Park Chiswick is a whole other episode we're going to combine it with Gunnersbury and maybe even Brentford I don't know yet might Brentford probably be an episode on its own anyway um, this is technically Chiswick but we had to include the Bolo house just because it's this is where the river was through a Bolo book before we talk about Sharon's sketch and how you can bid for it we just want to make a special plea to all our fantastic new subscribers it's the only way that we know that our work is being appreciated and the best way of letting you know whenever there is a new episode live a shout out to all our fantastic new subscribers from Acton please stay with us we'll be covering other areas of healing shortly and also we'll be covering Chiswick, Brentford and Gunnersbury and please subscribe if you haven't yet done so it costs you absolutely nothing if there are any episodes you missed, a link to the full eight-episode playlist of over 160 minutes of Actonian pleasure is available at the end. Just click on the box on the top right during our Love Your London theme tune. OK, so now all, that, that's all I now have to tell you about is uh, remind you that in the description below you will find details of um, Sharon's arts, which by the time you watch this, if you're too late, will have been sold. Uh, this will be on eBay, the EURL will be down there. Uh, you may remember that she was uh, drawing this in, in Gunnersbury um, Park uh, earlier in, in, a, in the previous episode. Um, and here we go. So if you're too late, you're too late. You've missed out on an exclusive piece of artwork. I've been wearing this thing now for days. I may as well wear it for the last few seconds. No, I'm going to take it off. Love you, London! So, adieu, lovely Acton. Our next episodes will be... Drum roll. Aldgate! And we'll be covering Spitalfields and Whitechapel as well, so you won't have to wait too long for them. Expect lots of markets, urban art, dodgy criminals, loads of history and cool pubs. In the first instalment, we'll be in Allgate and taking a trip up Petticoat Lane among other places. See you soon! And don't forget to bid on my sketch! Bye! Aw, uh, I don't want to be in the picture. Too late. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond Come love your London with us and sing with us this song There's no more smog but weave a vlog to brighten up your day Come love your London with us from Q to Haringey Come out with us and play, love your London Have a banana, 